Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at personality and health from a student A to Z of psychology. Uh, this is from the module PYC 1501 UNISA's module. So let's begin. Personality and stress. Stress is a part of modern life and most people cope fairly well with demands posed by daily living. However, some people find it easier to cope than others. When you cannot cope with stress, you develop various ways of reacting, one of which is form of physical illness when your body shows symptoms of stress. Prolonged or chronic stress is often associated with psychosomatic diseases such as ulcers and heart problems these psychosomatic diseases results from problem in body function in presence of chronic stress the kind of psychosomatic disease that develop is associated with weakness or poor functioning of part of body which may be inherited in the presence of chronic stress the weak part of the body is most vulnerable this is why people tend to respond to stress with a particular type of bodily reaction for example one person may respond by always getting headache whereas another person may frequently get stomach upset this is called response specificity referring to the tendency to respond to stresses with a specific type of physiological reaction in this section, we are going to look at an example of one type of behavior pattern that has been well documented, the so-called cardiac personality referring to people at high risk of heart disease. Two well-known cardiologists of USA have been developed a classification system of people's risk of heart disease on the basis of their personalities, Fredman and Roseman. Those who have a higher risk are called type A personalities and those who are unlikely to have a heart attack are called type B personalities. Type A individuals strive hard for success in everything they do. Obvious signs of type A personality are time urgency and chronic anger or hostility. Type A people are very competitive and achievement orientated. They generally believe that when, uh, with enough effort they can do anything and they push themselves very hard. They generally do not trust other people. They hurry everywhere, do several things at once, see everything as urgent and get impatient, frustrated and angry with people who do not Think, who do things slowly or stand in their way. They also tend to bottle up their emotions and do not express them outwardly. This increases the rate, heart rate and blood pressure which places tremendous strain on heart. In this way, feeling of anger and hostility and strongly related to an increased heart risk. Some people who seem to be unusually resist resistant to stress have hardy personality a study of hardiness examined manager managers in highly stressed stressful position and found that some of the managers tend to get sick after stressful event while others were very seldom ill both groups were typically type a personalities but the main difference was in their approach to life the hardy group had a sense of personal commitment to themselves, their work and their families and other stable values, a sense of control over their lives and their work and they tended to see life as series of challenges rather than as a threat or a problem. It is important to realize that one can succeed in life without sacrificing one's health and happiness in the process. If you recognize some of these characteristics in yourself, you may want to look at the following suggestion of reducing hostility. Beware of your anger hostile and cynical thoughts by recording them in a journal or diary note what happened when you felt this way and what action you took and review this at the end of each week admit to someone that you have a problem with excessive anger and hostility interrupt the hostile thoughts whenever they occur when you have these thoughts try to work out for yourself why these are irrational and unreasonable why you are angry try to put yourself mentally in other person's shoes learn to laugh at yourself humor can diffuse anger learn how to relax for example by sitting quietly and listening to music or going for a walk practice trusting other people make an effort to listen carefully to other people learn to make your point without being aggressive do not let small irritation get in your ways and pretend that today is the last day of your life 
try to forgive people other rather than blaming them we all have shortcomings to gain a better understanding of human behavior we need to turn to field of study called personality psychology or personology we use our common sense or everyday knowledge of human nature to try to understand one another but this is generally not quite enough and therefore we need to look at the formal theories personality theories provide a way of describing explaining and predicting human behavior many personality theories have been developed by psychotherapists and are based on their experience in working with people our behavior is influenced by many factors the main one being the following biological factor environmental stimuli interpersonal situation cultural and social factors and physiological or spiritual factors when we use the word personality we usually refer to whatever it is that make people who they are in the sense personality is a sum of all physical physiological and spiritual characteristics that influences the behavior of an individual Another important point is that a person's personality does not exist exist in isolation. Personality is integrated with other attributes to influence the behavior. For example, two people may have the same intellectual ability, but they may attain different level of achievement depending on the factors such as their level of motivation, perseverance, interest, and involvement. Contexts such as social and cultural factors also influence the behavior, character. The word character has a narrow meaning than personality and refers to those aspect of personality involving the person values and his or her ability to behave at according to those values. It implies that person has been evaluated where personality is merely a description. Character refer to a person's moral, moral at, attributes and values that are largely influenced by education and experience in the social environment. Temperament refer more specifically to people emotions and the way in which they express them and deal with them it can be defined as a person relatively consistent and distinctive emotional character mood and reaction style temperament is regarded as having four main di- dimension and characteristics general activity level ranging from high ac- high activity to extreme passivity emotionality ranging from being easily upset agitated to being very calm social social ability ranging from being outgoing to being very very shy and aloof impulsivity ranging from having a great deal to self control to lacking self control traits traits are stable qualities that most mostly remain consistent in various and changing situation for example words like friendly and aggressive refers to traits when we say that someone is friendly we mean that person is friendly to most people and that person friendliness does not change much over time traits are generally inferred from behavior for example if you see someone at a party talking to strangers you might infer the person is sociable type a person type refer to people who have several traits in common it is a way of labeling a person who supposedly have several key traits in common with other for example if you say someone is motherly type and you probably mean that person has traits such as being warm caring nurturing protective and so on self concept your self concept consists of all your ideas perception and feeling about who you are We build our self concepts from our daily experiences and revise them in the light of new experiences. Once a self concept is established, it tends to shape the way we see things and can affect our judgment to the life. Self esteem refers to the way we evaluate ourselves. A person with high self esteem is usually confident, proud and self respecting. A person with low self esteem is very critical to self. insecure and lack confidence self esteem rises when we experience success and are praised by others a personality theory is a system of concept assumption ideas and principle proposed to explain personalities there are many theories of personalities and a brief overview of five different theoretical approaches will be presented in this video trait theories Trait theories of personality are more concerned with describing people in term of trait than explaining the origin of trait. There are many important trait theories of personality and the two main ones are included here. Alport's trait theory. His view was that the most important trait are motivational trait related to values. For example, a man who value money 
more than family life would be expected to accept a promotion at work that would mean getting more money but would require spending more time away from home alpot believe that there are cardinal central and secondary trait ranked in order of importance cardinal trait are those that are so important to an individual that they do dominate that individual's life for example the desire or of social ju- justice is trait that dominate mahatma gandhi alpot believe that very few people have cardinal traits central traits are more common these are important traits that influence and organize most of our behavior the desire for power is an example of central trait secondary traits are much more specific and are less important as a description of a person behavior for example the specific food preference is regarded as a secondary trait Another major approach to trait is found in work of Raymond B Cattle. He wanted to learn how traits were linked and began by studying visible aspect of personality or surface trait. He obtained data on surface trait of a large number of people, analyzed data and observed that surface surface traits often appear in clusters or groups. Some traits appear together so often that they seem to represent a basic trait. or underlining personality characteristics called a source trait cattle developed a list of 16 source traits that provide a description of person personalities according to the five factor model, model of personality personality can be understood in terms of five innate universal dimension which are stable over time and have important consequences across the life span these five traits are reduction of cattle 16 source traits or personality factors the so called big five personality traits are neurotism extroversion openness agreeableness and consciousness openness refers to how intelligent imaginative and open to new ideas as opposed to being conventional and lacking in curiosity and creativity you are consciousness how self disciplined responsible and achieving as opposed to irresponsible careless and undependable you are extroversion how introverted or extroverted you are outgoing talkative socia- sociable and enjoying social situation agreeableness how friendly nurturing and caring compared to being cold indifferent spiteful and self centered neurotism how negative or having upsetting emotions people who are anxious or unhappy as opposed to being calm even tempered even tempered and comfortable psychoanalytic approach psychodynamic theory arose from discontent with just examining personality traits as a way of understanding behavior Feud was a medical doctor on the basis of talking to his patient about their thoughts and feeling he concluded that ill health result from conflict about sexuality and aggression the central theme of feud theory is that behavior is the outcome of wishes desire and feeling that people are unaware of in other words their so called unconscious thoughts according to the feud theory people have three type of primitive unconscious instinct sexual inst- instinct these influence the experience and behavior that generate pleasure ego instinct these influences the experience and behavior associated with preservation of self hostility instinct these influence aggression experience and behavior there are two principle according to feud that regulate these instinctual energy in feud view these instincts are innate they generate tension and energy that cause the person to behave in a way they releases the tension the two principles are the pleasure principle direct energy in the direction of immediate gratification of need wishes or desires and the second one is reality principle which enables the person to delay the immediate gratification of need so the greater pleasure may be experienced later on Psychoanalytical approach sees personality as a dynamic system directed by three mental structures the id the ego and the superego id refers to innate biological impulses and urges the ego refer to the executive part of self that regulates the expression of id's inst- instinctual 
energy the ego is in touch with the reality and can foresee the consequence of behavior ego is part of a system thinking planning and problem solving it conscious it is it has a conscious control of self so pre ego refers to the conscious the superego is like a judge or censor if someone does not adhere the society standards of acceptable behavior superego will allow you to feel experience of guilt or anxiety the idea is made up of innate biological instinct and the work on the basis of pleasure principle that is it looks for the expression of pleasure thinking seeking urges if we were solely under the control of id the world would be totally chaotic the id provides energy for psyche or personality this energy is called libido which underlines the effort to survive as well as our sexual desire and pleasure seeking few would also describe a death instinct called called thanatos that produces aggression and destructive urges according to few would our long history of wars and violence is a evidence of such urges the ego is often described as the executive because it directs the energy supplied by id the id can be described as a blind king or queen who has considerable power but who must rely on others to carry out orders the ego direct power by linking the desire of the id to external reality we say that the ego is guided by reality principle that is it delays action until the activity is practical or appropriate the ego is the conscious control of personality and can prevent the world from being chaotic The superego is a judge or censor of the thought and action of ego. Part of superego is regarded as conscious. When you do not keep to the standards of your conscious, you are punished with the feeling of guilt. The superego acts as a kind of parent to bring behavior under control. Behaviorist approach to personality emphasizes the personality is no more or no less than a collection of learned behavior. According to this approach, personality, like le- other learned behavior, is acquired through classical and apparent conditioning, learning through observation, reinforcement, extinction, generalization, and stimulus discrimination. If you get a low marks in an exam, do you see it as challenge to the work harder, or sign that you should drop the course? These are different interpretation to same situation. An expectancy refers to your anticipation that whatever you do will lead to reinforcement. For example, if you have found in past that working harder leads to getting good marks, then this is likely to be a reaction to getting low marks because you expect to work to get better marks if you work hard. that would be expected reinforcement the notion of reinforcement values mean that people attach different values to various activities or reward some people getting a mark better marks is reward for other getting praise and respect may be reward they want there is another factor in of that is self reinforcement self reinforcement refers to praising or rewarding yourself for having a made a particular response for example the pride you feel in getting a better marks may be the only